today I'm going to go over the driver's seat position in the Model 3 and the Model S. I'm going to compare the two, what I think about them. This is not scientific at all. This is just my thoughts. What I like about the one vehicle and what I like about the other and also what I don't like. So, so we're going to start with the Model 3 since that's what I'm in right now. I measured both seats. What I did was I measured the the bottom of the seat, I measured the back of the seat, how high the headrest is. Uh, on the Model S you can adjust the height of the headrest, but uh, I also measured the bolsters. These, that's what these are on the side, what they, they grab you. And pretty much the seat, seat dimensions are the same between both vehicles. I thought the Model S was going to have bigger seats, uh, more comfortable seats. Now one of the major differences between the two cars is the Model S has real leather and the Model 3 has the vegan leather, or the fake leather. I thought the, the butt where you sit down, I thought there was gonna be a major difference there between the bolsters on the sides of the seat. And actually that's the same, it's 12 inches. That center pad, that center leather piece, is actually 12 inches. Uh, the bolsters are a little smaller on the 3 than the S. Uh, the difference is actually an inch, half inch wider on each side, so it's a, a t an inch total. And actually, the length of the, the butt of the seat is the exact same, almost the same. 20 and a half on the Model 3, 20 in the S, pretty much the same thing. The Really, the major difference in the sizes is, is the side bolsters. So there's an inch difference. The Model S comes out a little bit more, more of a racing seat. It hugs you more on the turns, has more of like a glove feeling around your body, around your... Your, uh, your back area, which isn't uncomfortable. You would think it'd be uncomfortable, but it, it actually hugs you and kind of makes you feel secure in the car. Uh, really nice. One thing I don't know about the car is the padding. They use a different padding in the Model S. The Model S has a softer, more cushion foam, I think, than the Model 3. I think the Model 3 foam is a little firmer. I don't know if the new seats, I have my VIN number is 11,800 something, so, I have the first generation seats. I don't have the second generation seats. So I don't, there's a great video going over the differences between the first generation and the second generation uh, from like Tesla. She has the new seats in her car and she was able to look at the first generation seats and really compare the differences. So go check that, that, that video out if you haven't seen it already. So the seats are very, very, very similar. They adjust the same. It's all power. They, they can tilt, they can pivot and all that stuff. It's just, I feel that the foam is the major difference between the two. As far as leg room, well, let me show you the leg room I have. This is my seating position. You can see, this is what I see. The screen's over here. You can see the speedometer's right there. And that's what you see when you drive. It's right above there. It's, it's not hard to see at all. You have this huge windshield. You can easily see everything. And then right over here, you have your speed where you're going. And all you have to do anyway is push down on this and you don't have to worry about any of that. But if you look here at my leg, the leg room that I have, again, I'm six foot five. And usually right in here is what really bothers me in cars because it really cuts into my leg, my leg right about here. This is actually really nice because this is padded. It's nice and soft, nice round over, so it doesn't really dig into your leg, which is perfect. The screen is up high. Again, I have long legs, and I'm actually, I moved forward a little bit so people can uh, sit actually behind me. This is up high enough, way away from my knee. I have plenty of leg room there. Even moving from the accelerator pedal to the brake pedal, there's plenty of room for me to move around. I actually have the steering wheel quite down because there's no instrument cluster up. You don't have to have it a certain spot so you can see the, the gauge cluster. So you can have this anywhere you want and you just have that wide open view of. So for those reasons, I feel this is a more comfortable car to drive all the time. I have plenty of room here. Granted, the Model S is a wider car and you have more elbow room, but this is plenty of room for even a giant like myself. I'm 90% sure I'm taking this to Florida, so I am going to have a nice long trip. So I have a little bit more seat time in this to see how I need to adjust the seat. Maybe I need to lift the seat up a little higher. The floor does seem a little higher in this than the Model S, uh, and I do have plenty of room here. I could go up a little bit higher, so I just have to play with that a little bit before um, a month and a week. A month and a week we're going to, uh, to Florida. I'm 85% sure I'm taking, the, taking this car. 
maybe 90. If it's just down to comparing the two cars, I much rather drive this car uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. The visibility is amazing, how low the dash is, what you can see out of. This feels and drives smaller than the Model S, and it is smaller than the Model S. It's about a thousand pounds lighter than the Model S. The Model S, after driving this, feels like quite a big car. Now, my wife loves it, and she wouldn't actually drive this thing every day. She actually likes her Model S a lot better than this car. Uh, which is great because this isn't her car. Stay away from my car, Karen. Obviously, this is a comparison, so let me go home and get the other car, and I'll meet you back here right meow. All right, we're back. Now I'm in the Model S, and first, let me just show you the view that I have versus the view from the Model 3. This is the same spot I had the other camera when I was showing you the Model 3. You have this big steering wheel in the way. You do have an instrument cluster, but look at the visibility difference. You, you can still see. I mean, we are up on a hill uh, overlooking the lake. I thought this was gonna be nice to look at instead of just my driveway. Obviously your speed's here instead of right here. Uh, I'll be like the eye doctor, follow my finger. It's not very hard. There's a lot of Tesla haters out there that complain from this, the speedometer here versus here. Not a huge difference. You still have to look down. Although with the Model 3, that's where the windshield ends. So you end up having more, more visibility anyway. But anyway, let me go over some of the things here. I do feel like the seat has a little bit more padding to it. The foam, the density of the foam, I think this just gives a little bit more. This is the bolster on this. You can tell it is more, it is more defined and the centerpiece is separate. So there's, there's just more give in the seat. It feels like it hugs you. It feels like someone's just grabbing you on your back and just holding you. It's very, very comfortable. The bottoms of the seats, seem very similar patterns are pretty much the same i really think it's the the leather warms up from your body temperature it's more pliable so i think that has something to do with it along with the density of the foam now the major difference that i don't like about this car well first of all the steering wheel feels giant compared to the model 3. Second of all leg room this is a lot wider car i do feel like i can spread out spread my wings a little bit so there's more width to it. So I'm gonna put my foot hovering over the accelerator pedal and let me show you where my, where my shin and my knees are. Large screen, since it's not across, it comes straight down, the 17 inch screen. There's a hard point right here. Now this is curved and padded so it's not bad. Right on my shin and right on my knee. It sits right there and it's not very comfortable. Now when I'm in autopilot, my foot goes off of it, but it still hits. And now it's, now it's hitting right on the bone. The Model 3 had the piece that came all the way across and it was just, and it was a little lower. So it felt, it was a little lower on my leg and it felt a lot more comfortable. Again, like I said, the steering wheel feels a giant. It's only one inch bigger, I believe. I think the Model 3 is a 13 inch wheel and this is a 14 inch wheel. I mean, it fits this car. Everything in this car is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more padded than the Model 3. It just feels big. That's what she said. If you're looking for a vehicle and to take on long trips and drive a lot, and you're gonna put a lot of highway miles on and use a lot of supercharging, I would definitely go with the S over the, over the 3 for that because supercharging is free a little bit bigger storage. I mean, well, twice the storage, actually. This has twice the storage over the three. You have a lot more room. The back seat, with it being wider, there is a lot more room back there for the kids to spread out and stay apart from each other so they don't argue. If you have kids, you know what I'm talking about. This is a 75D. The only problem with a 75 kilowatt battery is you actually, char it takes a little longer to charge. The Model 3 charges a lot faster, even though it's a 75 kilowatt battery as well. Uh, you just have more range because the car is a lot lighter. The first third of the battery charges very, very fast. It gives you a lot of range really fast. And then the range kind of slows down as are filling up the battery. So with the range in the Model 3, it seems like it charges a lot faster than the 75D in the Model S. You'll end up spending another 10 more minutes at a supercharger with the S than you would with the three. Is that a deal breaker? I don't think so. If you're going on a long trip, you're gonna to wanna to get out and stretch your legs, go to the bathroom a little bit, and you're really not gonna notice that extra 10 minutes. You just take your time a little longer. So if you're one of those people that are gonna buy a Model S, use my referral code. It's at the end of the video in the description below. You get free supercharging for life. That's a, it's a pretty big thing, especially if you live close to a supercharger. Free charging, even though supercharging is cheap, free is pretty cheap. I don't know if you can get cheaper than free. I'll have to get back to you on that one.
But anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, if you if you think I missed something, ask me down below. I'll answer them. I answer. I try to answer every question. If this helped you out at all, give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and look for ways in the description on how you can support the channel and how you can save yourself some money as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.